Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be creating an animation on an input with just HTML CSS. Now this has been heavily inspired from Materials UI and as you can see when you click the actual label goes from inside the box to outside allows you to type and then if you type nothing in it comes back. If you type something in it it stays up there. Okay, to get started, I've just removed everything from my index.html. I've just left the head and there's nothing in the body. Uh, this is just connecting to my style.css and I'm also calling in a Google font. And that font is displayed down here on my style.css. I've also left these styles in here, which is essentially just allowing me to display everything in the center of the screen. So uh, what we're looking at is height is basically the full height of the screen, display flex, uh, align center, and justify content into the middle of the screen. So if I type something in here, let's just say a form, and we're gonna use an input. Name is gonna be name. And we're gonna set this to required. Now we need to set this to required, and I'll show you why a little bit later. Next, I'm gonna use a label, and then call that the name. And then after that, I'm going to use a span and whatever you want the span to be called. So right now we've got an input with a label right there. All we're essentially going to be doing is overlaying the label on top of the input field. And then we'll use CSS pseudo selectors like after focus and valid to actually target the, the um, animations. So when it becomes active or focused, then actually slide that animation away from you know its, its current state. So how do we do that? Quite straightforward. I'm gonna add some styles. Note I'm not using any IDs or classes, so it's gonna be quite specific to the form, input, label, and span. Um, obviously, if I had a lot more elements on the page, I'd be able to just target you know form ID. I know form. So how, how why do we want this? We want this. Let's say. 50% and that doesn't really matter height um, we want this to be let's say 45 pixels position we want this to be relative not sure what's happened there and then hidden uh, overflow hidden okay so the reason that we want overflow hidden is that animation of the the border actually sliding in it comes from outside of the form because we position it over here and then when it becomes active we slide it in now if it if we kept the the border all the way on the far left we you see that the whole time so the reason we have overflow hidden is because we don't want that border to have just kind of been floating on on the side over here next we want some styles on our input so here i'm going to say i want the width oh to be 100% I want the height to be 100%. And that's essentially 100% of what we've just declared over here. I want the position, uh, sorry, not the position. I want the uh, border uh, to be zero. And I want the outline to be zero. So now we've got nothing on the page, which is fine. And then I'm just going to set the color. I've actually got a color over here, so I'm going to just grab that. And let's just say color is that. Now, if I just pull up inspect quickly, we do actually have an input field over here. And I could just show that by, let's just, uh, background is gray. So we do have that uh, actually have the input. Now the label is sat just below it. We need to add some styles to that. So what we're going to say is form input uh, label, and then uh, sorry, not input label, form label, and then we're going to say position absolute height is the the height that we want it to be sat over this this box so obviously 100% and the width 100% otherwise we'd have like a, a weird background you know when when the animation happens so if I save that 
Now our label is position absolute, but it's sat right below it. So what we want to do is make sure that that's positioned on top. So left is zero pixels and bottom is zero pixels. So right now, our name and our inputs are in the exact same position. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that gray background. Now we want to declare a um, a border on the bottom. So a border hyphen bottom. And let's say this is one pixel solid. And I'm just gonna reuse the color that we had up here. So I've saved that. I think you can start seeing it to take some shape. But if you can see, because I've, la I've layered the label on top of the input, I can't actually click it. I can't go through to the actual form. So what you want to do is you want to use pointers, uh, pointer events, and you want to say none. Basically, don't declare any pointer events. I can't, I can't select it. I can't click it. So it's just going to be almost a transparent layer. So save that. Next, what I want to do is I want to um, declare some styles after the label. So I'm going to say form, label, and after. So typically what you'd find is after and before are used quite uh, quite commonly on like um, ULs and LIs because you want, I don't know, the, the actual um, bullet points to be slightly different. You don't want it to be like a, a traditional bullet point. You want it to be, I don't know, an arrow or whatever. Um, we can utilize the exact same thing here. So we want to do something after the label. And what is it that we want to do? Well, we want to, first of all, you've got to declare some content and then we want to position it absolute. We want the height and the width again to be 100%. Then we want the, this is the animation uh, border. So what do we want the border to look like? So I'm going to say border bottom three pixels solid and then I've got a color that I've just picked from coolers over here now we obviously need to um, target this so first of all I'm going to save that and I'm going to say it is position bottom zero pixels and left zero pixels so right now we've got that sat just right down at the bottom now, the reason that we've got the uh, little black line is because obviously we've got a border bottom down here. So it's actually negative one pixels. So it's really difficult to see, but essentially that's what's happening. So because we've got that border bottom uh, negative one pixels, I can just move this down negative one. And it's gone. Okay, so next, what do we want to do? Well, we actually want to move this. Um, with a transform and transition so I'll transform this and if we wanted to bring like the uh, the animation up we'd use the y-axis but obviously we want to bring it in from the left or the right we're obviously bringing it in from the left so we to use translate X and what we're going to say is where does it start where, where is its starting position well it's actually starting a hundred percent away from to the left so this pick this uh, ending point right here is all the way over here so if i save that that's why we've got the position overflow as hidden uh, sorry the overflow as hidden so right now if i remove the overflow hidden you can see that it's all the way over here if i bring it back in it's gone okay so now this is the animation effect so when we actually um activate this later what is what is the um, animation effect that we want so i'm going to say transition is uh, how quick do we want it to happen so let's say 0 0.5 seconds we want it all and let's say ease um, it's not giving it me because i've not declared i've not terminated my line uh, ease in okay that's everything there now obviously the label over here is floating at the very top 
we want it to be down at the very bottom until we've activated this this actual in, input or we focus on the input i'm just going to get rid of this over here and we will do that quickly now and i'll say form label span now the reason that we put a span in earlier and I'm, when i'm saying span i'm talking about inside the label it's because obviously if we target the label and we moved it and like when you when you activate it you know the text slides up well it's going to bring everything with it you know it, we can't be specific to just the text because the bo the border on the bottom would actually move as well so we only want to target the span we don't want the border we don't want anything else moving we just want the text moving which is why we've wrapped everything in a span okay so we want to position it absolute where do we want it? Well, let's just say on the bottom, about five pixels ish. I'm quite happy with that actually. Five pixels work quite well. And then we want to say left, zero pixels. And what's the animation again? So just like up here, what's the animation? So I'm just going to copy this one. Uh, so transition, five seconds, all ease in. So when we click it in a minute and it transitions away, this is the animation that it'll be using. Okay, so finally, the this is where we're gonna animate the, those final little bits. So the text coming in, the uh, sorry, the, bo uh, the border coming in, the text moving up to the top. And what we wanna do is we wanna say, form, input, focus. But what are we gonna do? Well, when you focus on it, I want you to do something to the label span okay so what is it that you want to do i want you to transform and what did we say before sorry transform uh translate y axis we we'll, we said the the border bottom was on the x axis well we want the focus of the label which is the uh, sorry the span inside the label well that's obviously transforming on the y axis so where is it that you want to go let's just say i want to go up Let's say 175%. Save. When I focus on it, okay, that's too high. Let's bring that down. Let's say 150. Okay, we can work with that. 125. There you go. 125 pixels. One, one, 125%. So whenever I focus on this now, the text moves. Fantastic. Um, so I can type the things in here and so on. Now the problem that I've got is now I've moved my, my cursor and it's become out of focus. Well, that's not obviously what we want. We want this to remain if there's something inside of it. Well, the reason that we set it as required earlier that I was talking about is because by it being required, you get access to a valid state. Well, is it valid? Well, it's always valid um, if you, if it's not required because it doesn't matter if it's in you know if you, if it's got content in or out of it. So, what we can do is we can copy this whole line, and instead of focus, we can say is valid. So, uh, what have I done? Comma, save. So, right now, text. I move away and it's valid now just to show you that in action if i remove required and save this now the reason it's staying up there is because it it's always valid like it doesn't need any text in it so by sending it to required it has to have text in it it's moving up to the top right okay finally we want to bring in the the border on the very bottom i'm going to just copy all of this bring it down now the only thing different here is obviously we targeted the label and we positioned it all the way across. So I'm gonna retarget the label with the exact same styles. So on focus and when valid. And what is it that we wanna do? Well, you just wanna bring it back to its original position. So it was, it was minus 100, it's now zero. So if I click on this, Fantastic. So if I type something. Now obviously this text being where it is, we can we can change that with patterns and, and whatnot. I'll leave you to decide that. I think 
it's probably a little bit too close to the to the label but uh, that's not not too important now what we can do because obviously we've got this whole transition going on i'm going to take this color over here and i'm going to say well actually when you become active or focused on animate the color as well so the color is now blue and that's it thanks very much for watching guys